Green Hornet. Uh... He hunts the biggest of all game. Public enemies who try to destroy our America. <laughs> daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in a thrilling adventure, Torpedo on Wheels. The Green Hornet strikes again. trucks lumbered along the trunk highways outside the city, moving with their loads of vital material. From a hill several hundred yards off the road, two men squinted through the darkness, checking the lights of each truck as it lumbered off the stiff grade. Is that it? What is it coming as the crest of the hill? I don't see any flight. Nor any lights. No. Let it pass. It didn't be long. The information is that right. We're waiting half an hour. Patience is a virtue you know nothing about, Corbin. Eh? It's cold, too. Another right, talk. Yeah. That's the one, Colin. See the red light? Now. Yes. Oh, dear, do I have to... Suffering snakes. A nurse's uniform. 
So you wormed your way inside them lines by posing as a nurse. <laughs> when you kill me, you figure it out. When the mother... Holy crap! Golly, I now, tell you... Now, now, Gail, you got inside, but you shouldn't have done it. If that trailer full of gasoline had blown up, the something would have lost its best woman reporter. Well, that's just it, Mr. Reed. There wasn't any gasoline trailer. There wasn't anything there but just a big hole in the ground. I don't reckon we can print anything because that's why they were keeping people away. But that truck had blown up, Mr. Reed. It wasn't any ordinary truck. It was carrying dynamite. <laughs> Sabotage just as sure as you and I are sitting here. Miss Manning is very lucky, yes? Yeah, she gives the appearance of being done, Kater, but there's plenty of brains behind that pretty face. Sentinel not Princess? And we can't have sensible information. That's why that area was roped off. <laughs> Poor Axford. He gets a uh, horn swallowed. These days, a lot of trucks are hauling war material. Guns, ammunition, and vital food. And this was a red flag job. Uh, will you explain to me? There's no mystery about it. Trucks that carry high explosives are required to fly red flags during the daytime and have red spotlights front and rear at night as a warning. Why do you say sabotage? Perhaps the truck had accidents and blew up. It was a clear stretch of road, Cato. Those drivers are careful. It was an upgrade. The truck was traveling slowly. Besides, here's something else. Here. Look at this. Mr. Britt, is this a clearing a newspaper truck? That opposition to oh, I tell you, Kato, don't you mention it in my order. We'll just keep it a deep, dark secret. But what is an ad in the clerk? The Sutton refused to run it. Oh, wanted. Experienced, long haul truck drivers. Get better wages. Seems we not run this thing? No, we turned it down. The sample doesn't encourage job piracy. But here's the odd angle, Kato. Our advertising department didn't get a kick from the people who wanted to place that ad. And yet the Sentinel has the top advertising coverage in the city. Every advertiser wants the Sentinel. Mm-hmm. Here's another angle. One of our truckmen applied. He couldn't find out where the job would be. They just weren't interested in it. I don't understand. Oh, wait, I'm not through. The only ones they were interested in were truck drivers used to hauling explosives. Yet they weren't doing any hollering that he could see at all. Truck drivers who haul explosives. Well, Mr. Brick, I don't see what that means. Never mind. I do. That's why we're going out tonight. Tonight? Pick up the hornet mask and the gas weapon. I hope there's plenty of gas in the black beauty. A few moments later, stepping through a secret panel in the rear of a closet in his bedroom, Britt Reed and Cato went along a narrow passage built within the wall of the apartment house itself. The passage led to an adjoining building which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, super-powered black beauty line car of the Green Hornet. <laughs> Let's get the car already, Mr. Green. Okay, let's travel. <clears throat> Britt Reed pressed the button. The great car roared into life. The section of wall in front raised automatically, then closed as the gleaming black beauty sped into the darkness. Yes, 
Braun. Best. So honored. I mustn't tell ever. Not... Mr. Kohler. I, I didn't know you... I was out in the hall with Wolf. We could see you through the glass in the door. It wasn't my fault. I never saw the hornet before in my life. Relax, sister. Maybe I believe you. You told him about the road race job of planning, didn't you? Yeah, that's what I thought. But I had to. Sure, sure. Forget it, see? Where's Wolf? Him? Oh, don't worry about a thing, Miss Murdoch. He went downstairs ahead of the hornet. He's going to follow him. He's going to find out who the green hornet really is. Pretty neat trick, huh? Well, Wolf? Yeah, Cola. That was a fine idea. To get one of that car in the alley, I saw it clearly. You know who he is? <laughs> I think it would be a good idea if you wrote a letter to the Daily Sentinel newspapers, Cola. No one had been be sure to see it, yes? <laughs> Five o'clock this evening, Cato. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse, please, Mr. Bates. Make it fast, Cato. I'm due up in my office right now. You recall last night when we leave Cooler office in Black Beauty? Well, I hesitated to speak of it at times, but now I'm more certain. Mr. Bates, I think somebody followed us last night. Somebody followed? Well, good morning, Jerry. You're down kind of late, aren't you? Oh, hello, actually. I've been down for hours already. Well, I was out rather late last night. Are uh, you coming upstairs to your office? I'm on my way up myself. Yes. All right. I'll see you later, Kato. Yes, sir. Good day. Well, let's not stand out in the street, actually. Let's go upstairs. Seems to have turned cold or rather suddenly, hasn't it? Sandy, you don't look good. Maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Oh, forget it, Ashford. But you look kind of pale and pink. Will you please forget it? I'm all right. I'm fine. I've been doing everything but take my pulse all the way up on the elevator. Have you had some bad news, Reed? Has somebody died? No. Not yet. Not yet? But you That's why I have work to do. I haven't even seen the first edition. I haven't talked with Gunnigan about today's front page. I have a dozen letters to get off. Now, will you please do me a favor and I... Mr. Reed! Mr. Reed! Oh, no. What? I should have traffic lights. Mr. Reed, heaven forget you. Sorry to clear them all out of breath. Take a deep one and start over. Well, I was helping Mr. Gungan check the mail, and this came to the Daily Sentinel. Well, I reckon you all better look at it. I never got such a start in my life. Sounds important. Let's see. So, for instance, here, will you stop your hands from shaking? Here, Casey. Uh, here, it's I don't know why Gungan pays any attention to crank letters. Like... Actually, listen to this. Dear editor. I won't tell you my name yet because I'm afraid of what might happen to me. The next time I write, I'll have police protection because I'll be positive then. In fact, I'm positive now. Mr. Editor, I know who the Green Hornet is. Now back to our story. Sentinel carried the unsigned note in a box on the front page. That night at Britt Reed's apartment, Cato shook his head mournfully as Britt read it. I'll have police protection because I'll be positive then. In fact, I'm positive now. Mr. Editor, I know who the Green Hornet is. Well, that's very sad, Mr. Britt. Make sure the headline, Cato. There's no time but joke. Always when I have sad dreams, is that sometimes somebody finds out you're a Green Hornet. You go to jail, Mr. Britt. You get executed for murder. I've never harmed anyone, you know that. But police not know it. Police record says Green Hornet is very bad criminal. Even murderer. I've noticed the sign. No, yeah, but obviously, you know the sign. I tell you, we were seen when we leave Cooler office last night in Black Beauty. Oh, too bad, isn't it? I've got the lowdown on Cooler and what? 
Fuller's secretary talks, but I wonder how much good it'll do us now. It's impossible to operate from behind steel bars. Are we going to take this sitting down? What is different? Sitting down or standing up? Pretty soon we are lying down. Six feet underground. Dead. Dead. Still dead. to go out and bless you tonight? After Lepper and Central, police will be on watch every place. You might as well, Cato. Our identity is known. It makes no difference what we do, does it? Yes, that's very true. Well, I want to see it. It's obvious we wouldn't have sent that letter to a newspaper for it to be published. Well, we don't want to disappoint him. Here's the Black Beauty. Hop in. How you can talk so calmly? Your, your life's in danger. Please, answer me one question, yes? What's that, Cato? Kohler and Wolf know who is Green Hornet. Is that right? Go on. It's very obvious what they do. Perhaps they notify police. Perhaps not. But if they offer you choice between jail and helping them with sabotage, well, what will you do, Mr. Britt? Get in the car, Cato. We'd better go. Hello. 
Hello? Who is inside? Well, one moment. Mr. Priest. I hear that. Oh, you, you heard me. Oh, no, it's nothing. Wolf is in the other room waiting. They've already, in case I didn't play ball with them. Then, the lights went out and Wolf came from behind. He used the front of his gun. They put you in closet. I was half conscious, kid. I heard them arguing with a woman about something. And when I heard he got away, they were touching her. They even forgot to take this money. Hey, uh, kid, look. There's a woman.
radio dramas created by George W. Trentle are a copyrighted feature of The Green Hornet, Incorporated. All characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. <laughs>